Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Tonight's tale, the year was 1991. I can still remember walking through the school parking lot on that fateful day. I had just pulled up and parked my car in the second-to-last spot down the line of other parked cars. As I exited my vehicle, my immediate attention was drawn to the school's field, but quickly shifted to a little boy. His little blue hooded jacket fluttered in the wind as he ran to the playground about 25 meters from the field. In the center of the open concrete of the parking lot, a dark colored van had just pulled up. But it wasn't actually in a proper parking spot. I remember it being parked over the top of a hopscotch outline. I froze in my tracks when I saw a man dressed in a really low quality bear suit emerge from the van. Now this was obviously out of the ordinary. The school's field didn't have a big game or anything scheduled that day, to the best of my prior knowledge. In fact, I came to the school in the first place to be with some family friends. We were just going to toss a ball around on the field. I even had to be given directions as I was not yet familiar with the area. It had been just a few days since spring had started and there were families all over having fun, so that man in the bear suit couldn't have been a mascot since there weren't actually any official events that day. I was just going to approach the man when he stepped further and called out to the little boy in a hushed, muffled, but audible volume. What he said still haunts me to this day. Hey there, Michael, he said. The boy stopped halfway to the playground and looked at him. Do you remember me? Do you remember those toys I promised you the last time? He added, which gave the little boy a look of pure excitement. He willingly ran up to the man and gave him a hug. Now, you're the last of my friends. I didn't think I'd have time to get to you. Now hurry up and get in the fun mobile. The others are waiting for you back at the cellar. The boy certainly acted like he knew the man, but this definitely seemed odd. And all I was thinking about in that moment was the story of Adam Walsh, the little boy who was abducted from a Sears department store many years before. That boy's fate had been decapitation. I was stunned. After a period of about 10 seconds that seemed like forever, the van drove off with the boy inside and the man in the bear suit at the wheel. I quickly got to my car and tried to follow the van, but that was a huge mistake. Like I mentioned earlier, I didn't know the area at all. After a series of sharp turns and long streets, I lost the van. I didn't even know how to get back to the school. I punched 911 into my mobile phone and tried to explain to the operator what I had seen, but I was immediately surprised at the amateur response she gave me. We don't appreciate prank calls. Please keep the line open for real emergencies, she said as she chuckled and then hung up. I didn't know what to do. When I saw the news that next day, the broadcast was plastered with a story about how a four-year-old boy had just disappeared from a playground at a school the day before. There were apparently hundreds of people helping to search for him, and the funny thing is, I tried to call in tips at first, but I didn't even have the mind in the moment to remember the license plate of the van, so I had nothing. I'd witnessed the boy go willingly into a dark van with a man dressed in a bear suit. This didn't help when the parents kept reiterating that their son would never just go with a stranger or even somebody that they knew without asking them first. But I knew this to be untrue. And I've always worried that the boy's fate ended up being much worse than Adam Walsh. His name was Michael Dunahy, and Michael, 
I am so sorry that I couldn't do anything to save you. So stay scary, my wildlings. Remember that those mascots are creepy as hell and it's not an overreaction to want to keep them away from your kids and make the most of your nights. <laughs>